Hi, inventors. I'm Lily, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Welcome to The Twerk Shop, a show that explicitly encourages radical diversity and inclusion by making the process of learning tech more fun, accessible, and relatable to people underrepresented in STEM. Each week, you'll come along with me as I create something fabulous using cutting edge tools and technologies. Then I'll put it through my patented twirl test to make sure that it's stage ready. That's right, we twirl with our tech because you know what they say, the family that slays together increases their socioeconomic status together. On this episode, we're coming to you live from Building 61 Boulder Library Makerspace. And today, we're going to be dabbling in the art of sculpture and using ourselves as the mold. We'll be utilizing this really cool stuff called heat moldable plastic. I'm going to introduce you to the products in its various forms, talk about its origins, and then we'll put it to use in the creation of an elaborate sculptural mask. I've never used this stuff before, so it's sure to be a treat for both you and me. But first, a little backstory. My interest in making has come organically out of necessity from years of never being able to find things that will fit my body. Sometimes even very basic things that every human on the planet needs like gloves, pants, hats. And don't get me started on these face masks and other personal protection equipment. Of course, I've seen some growth in this area, but for the most part, there's still a bit of an accessibility issue. Raise your hand if you have a big face. Comment, now put your hands up if you have a big face like me. Shout out to my big face, I stand. If you're into costumes at all, you know that sometimes a good mask can make or break your fashion. It can also make or break a good time. As ill-fitting masks, hats, and other accessories are often very irritating and can lead to lasting pain if rubbed on specific bones, joints, or skin for any extended period of time. So imagine how harmful it can be to have a nose the shape of mine in a world where masks are generally made with this super narrow nose piece. She ain't stopping to smell no roses with that on. Ouch. Another issue I've experienced is getting a mask that's made for someone with a narrower face than mine, and the eyes are super close together and shit, or doesn't adequately cover the majority of your face. So there go all of my eyes wide shut masquerade ball mysterious fantasy high fashion moments just right out the door. I mean, why wear a mask if the majority of your face is still exposed? We see you. <laughs> Honey, those are frames. That's eyewear. The problem here is that a size small is usually the generic size or the largest size in stock, which we've seen reflected in other annals of fashion. I'm sure everybody wants to be Batman, but that mass produced generic mask sold at your local costume shop is definitely not for every face. Well, enter heat moldable plastic. This heat moldable plastic creates an opportunity for accessibility in that regard, allowing us to have a direct mold of our faces and create a mask that will fit like a second skin. Materials. In addition to these sheets of heat moldable plastic, this material also comes in pellet form, which allows for much more elaborate construction and production of shapes. The ones I'm using today are just $19 for three little measly ass sheets. <laughs> this shit ain't cheap. Link in the description. <laughs> just heat the sheets to above 150 degrees Fahrenheit for two to three minutes until they turn from white to clear. Using a heat gun or hot water, you'll wanna work on a smooth glass surface as the heated plastic won't stick to glass. I've been known to grab hot food out of a hot skillet with my hands. Disclaimer, do not put the 150 degree plastic on your skin right away. You may burn your skin on some very real Phantom of the Opera type shit. Once it's soft and no longer scolding hot, you can mold it into any shape you desire. And when it cools, it'll be strong and permanent. If you change your mind, you can reheat it and modify it until you get it right. You can reshape and add to your work as often as you need. Super nifty for us indecisive types. Since this plastic is so strong, you can drill it, sand it, varnish it, or super glue it. It's super versatile and has hundreds of uses. Moldable plastic sheets are great for crafts, art projects, home repair, model making, toys, cosplay costumes, masks, armor, prototyping, and is commonly used in medical practice, actually, specifically in cancer treatment as masks for radiotherapy. 
You can use it to make custom parts, handles, grips, hooks, brackets, and cases. Adding color is super easy as well, just by melting a few plastic color pellets along with the moldable sheets, or you can add powder paint or alcohol dye to the molten plastic, and those are available at craft stores. Alternatively, you can apply acrylic paints or special spray paints for plastics after it's cooled. Maybe a temperature sensitive color changing paint powder can be useful. By using the sheets, there's no need to roll out and flatten the melted pellets. These sheets have a flexible thickness of about a 16th of an inch, making it easy to wrap around objects and to cut out different shapes from the sheet, such as our eye holes. As I said before, a glass dish or even parchment paper make for a great surface to work on to prevent sticking. You'll wanna take care that the hot plastic doesn't stick to things you don't want it to, such as certain other plastics like acrylic, vinyl, PVC, polystyrene, ABS, fingernail polish, fabrics, metals, you name it. To that end, you also wanna make sure that your hands are clean before you start forming the plastic into the shape. Otherwise, you'll have your hand stick to the plastic, the plastic stick to the metal, and that poor plastic will be stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> you sound stuck in the middle with you. To turn this little packet of plastic sheets into an elaborate mask, we're gonna need a couple of things. The essentials for this project include your plastic sheets, of course, a bowl of hot water, which we'll be microwaving here at the twerk shop, a heat gun, parchment paper, because I don't have a glass surface, a towel handy, an X-Acto knife, paint and primer, although I have no idea how I'm going to use it yet, you also want adhesive for unforeseen reasons. It could come in handy. And then you also want some string for tying the mask. You could also use elastic or Velcro. Depending on the shape of your mask, you may even be able to pin it into your hair at such hair. So I'm thinking about assembling this and my strategy is gonna to be to use the full water submersion technique for the base as I feel that it'll give me the more even melt, leading to a more even cast of my face and head, my face head. Then I think I'll use the heat gun to mold the other two sheets into interesting shapes. And then I'll use it again to make those separate pieces malleable, forming one large structure on the mask. If heating doesn't lead to a strong enough bond between the separate pieces, then I'll have to use the adhesive. But from what I've heard, simply reheating the plastic sheets should be enough to mold them together. After that, I'll let them dry and harden, and then we'll commence to the cutting of the holes for the eyes and nostrils. After that, we'll jump into priming and painting the piece and finally installing our elastic strings to make it more wearable. So let's get started.
As I'm strategizing ways in which to glamorously cover this perfection that is my beautiful mug, I invite you to create some cool high art masks that fit your face as snugly as the skin the goddess created you in. Please tag us in all of your creations and comment below if you run into any issues along the way. I'd love to see the cool designs that you come up with as you flex your personal artistry muscle, remembering that without creativity, there can be no innovation. Now you already know that a wearable is not useful to me unless it's riding my face like a jockey in the Kentucky Derby, honey. So I'm gonna go get changed and I'll see you at the stables. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't be two-faced. Hit the post notifications bell next to the subscribe button. You lazy bitch. And remember, behind every mask is a face. And behind that, a story. A special thanks to Medicine Horse for co-sponsoring this video. Medicine Horse is a nonprofit organization based in Boulder that offers a wide variety of mental health sessions for both groups and individuals. If you're interested in learning more about their horse and human therapists, offerings, or how to support their work, please visit medicinehorse.org. This program was made possible with the generous financial support of the Boulder Library Foundation. To learn more and find out how you can get involved and help fund future library programs, visit boulderlibraryfoundation.org today.